We are on page 60, top line. Uh, the story until now is that Light got a lot of properties, he's like Avram did, and he started fighting, because Light said it's my land because Avram has no children, and therefore I'm going to inherit the land, and therefore he let his shepherds graze the flock without any uh, muzzles, and Avram Avinu muzzled their stuff, and therefore uh, they started to fight. So Avram basically says to Light, okay, listen, we can't live like this. If you go right, I go left. You go left, I go right. But we got to split. We got to get out of here. So, Buzzing says like this. We used to light the saying of, light, oh, picked up his eyes. The eyes called Kika Yarden. He saw the whole uh, plain of the Jordan River. Uh, it was all watered. It was an abundance of, it was very fertile land. The fresh is Hashem because this is before Hashem destroyed Sudam and Amera. Kigan Hashem carried to Mitzrayim like the land of Egypt. It was like the garden of Hashem in the land of Egypt going towards Zohar, which was the name of the city. Basically, the city of Sodom and Amora, that area was extremely fertile. So light sees, you know, this is great land to go to. He didn't care that the fact that the people were rotten, the people were terrible people. He didn't care about that. He saw dollar signs. Fertile land. And he said, that's, that's what I want to do. Business was good. Business was good. Everything was it. great. He wanted to go. He saw a lot of mashka. Huh? He had a lot of mashka. <laughs> now, Egypt was irrigated by the Nile. So therefore, this was, was like fertile land. Just like Egypt was fertile was from the Nile. Fayyiv Khalilayt. Okay, so listen what it says. Yiv Chalil Light Light shows then called Kikar Ayari. Told Avram, okay, you know what? I'm going to the Zdom. Vayisel Light Mikadem and Light journeyed from the east. Vayipardu Ishmi Alochiv and they separated themselves one from the brother. Okay, now what happened over here? Um, even though they were wicked, he did not. And therefore, it says an interesting thing. It says. Vayivchar loy light. You should say vayivchar light. Light picked. What do you mean vayivchar loy light? He picked it by himself. He didn't even consult with Avram Avinu. He just did it himself. Vayivchar light. He picked. He picked for himself light. And Mufashim say he didn't even uh, discuss this. Sixty. Page sixty on top. Well, well, that's what Avram had told him to do, though. So why why are they uh, they're trying to make him look bad there? Who did he make look bad? Lot. <laughs> Avram said to him, you choose. Yeah. So so what? So he asked Yeah, but he should have consulted. Him. Listen, Avram was a, his older mentor. He should have chose, discussed it, the fact with Avram. I mean, I said, listen, he this is what I would like. what Avram told him to do that. Yeah, but he should have still consulted. That's the lesson. It would be nice. Yeah. Okay, so now like this. But he used to let me care them. Rashi and Ibn Ezra says he traveled in a west, westerly direction from Avram. Where is it now? What Zdoim was west of Bethel. But Mizrahi points out that the Jordan is actually east. So some of Farshim say that Light didn't even want to tell Avram that he's going to Zdoim. He went in the opposite direction of Zdoim that Avram Avinu shouldn't think, because you understand, he's going to Zdoim, there's rotten people. So he didn't want his uncle to think bad of him. You know, he still had that. So he didn't go straight towards the daim. He went the opposite direction. The Avram Ravinu should think he's going somewhere else. And then he made a U-turn. Once he was out of sight of Avram Ravinu, he made the turn. And then he went uh, towards the daim. So how, how did he find out later? Yeah. He, he found out because people eventually told him. But now it says like this. But Yisrael like me kedem another interpretation that Rashi brings down. But Yisrael like me kedem, and um, yeah, Medrash says kedem means the first kadmeinu shalaylam. God is called kedem because he was the first one. But Yisrael like me kedem means he actually left God. He left serving God. He said, I don't want Avram, I don't want God, 
I don't want to have anything to do with this religion. But, well, that's what he said. You're saying Chaz Now, uh, the, the, but the point is, he was still connected. Because we see he treated the Malachim nicely. When the Malachim came to him, he, he gave him matzahs. So something rubbed off. But the Mephoshim add to this, and they say like this, because it was so fertile, he said, what do we need God for? God didn't need for, to give rain. God didn't need to give uh, prosperity. This is a prosperous place without God. Who needs God? He said, I don't want God, and I don't want Avram Avinu. That's what he said. He used to like Mikadam. Actually, the Mephoshim explained Mikadam. Mashi brings it down also. Light. Light. I don't want neither Avram, I don't want his God, and all that. Okay? And therefore, the Taz being down, other Mephoshim say that, one second, that Light was actually embarrassed to tell Avram that he picks his name. He still had respect. Even, you know, it's interesting, those days, you're a rebel, but you still had respect. You rebelled respectfully. That's what, not like nowadays. They rebelled respectfully. The Taz says you push it embarrassed to tell it's like him. not parking in the still parking lot in Shabbos, but a few blocks away. A few blocks away, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or, or, okay, well, it's not, you know. What? Was the Torah given at this time? No. Torah is Avram Avinu, seven generations later. So why should the guy... Yeah, but Avram Avinu preached the oneness in God, the seven night laws. Yeah, but just because he preached it doesn't mean someone else has to believe it. Yeah, but Avram... No, it was an obligation of all the nations to believe in God. It's one of the seven... Why, at that time? Yeah, yeah, seven mitzvahs were given to Adam. And Noyach. Okay, now it says like this. <laughs> they left um, they separated from the, from the brother now even though they separated but the sparks of holiness still remained in light okay because um, it's interesting because of this the Mephoshi would say you know there's a myth in the Torah that a male convert from Amin and Moyav, which were the descendants of Light, the two descendants, when Light had the relation with his two daughters, there was Amin and Moyav. So the Torah says, they saw the Amini and Moyavi Bekal Hashem. A male convert, even, from Amin and Moyav cannot marry a Jewish girl. Okay? So why, why was that punishment strict by them? The guy converted, why not? Because this represents Light who separated himself from Avram Avinu. So, and not only from Avram Avinu, but from Hashem. So because he separated himself from Hashem, he was punished because of that, that his descendants, even when they convert, cannot marry a Jewish girl. But, one second, but... Even after a few generations. Yeah. Now, yet, Rus, the female converts from Amin and Mayav, did come from light, who was the forebearer, the ancestor of David HaMelech, and the ancestor of Mashiach. So light still retained sparks of connection from Avram Avinu, but the male, the male guys, you know, they couldn't convert because that's what light did. So the men were punished, not the women, that if they converted, they could marry Jewish men. Okay, so where, what happened over here? Avram Yosheh Beretz Canaan, Avram lived in the land of Canaan, and therefore it doesn't say any particular place. Why doesn't it say any particular place? And Mephoshim explained, or it's Rabbah explains, because he didn't live in one place. Avram Avinu walked out, he was a Chabadnik. He went around from place to place spreading Yiddishkeit. So therefore, it says he lived in the land of Canaan. Canaan is a country, seven, seven nations, right? He doesn't say where in Canaan, because he kept moving around. But like Yoshev, Arya, Kikor, like originally moved around in the plains of the Kikor, okay, but Vayal Atzadeh, and he basically pitched his tents for his shepherds as for all the way he's doing. Or as the Mephoshim explained, like, what's the name? The Radak says, Light kept moving around, Kikor al and Vayal Atzadeh, until he finally settled in, in the country as day. Probably if Sedum, the, they were not very hospitable, they would stretch the body of the guys who would come in and yeah, do all of this and things. shrink them, yeah. Yeah. So how did he get in? 
He saw money dollar signs. I know, but but how did they let him to get in? Oh, they weren't that bad at that time. They got Surely worse. They, were they, not. Got, worse they got they got worse as time went on. But how long did he live in like Sedum? The transformation to bad. To okay, from here. Real bad. From here. How many years? Okay, I'll tell you. From here, Avram over here was seventy-five. Avram Avinu had his bris at a hundred, which is twenty-five years later than this. Yes, twenty-five years later than this. Then uh, the Malachim came, and Light was still in Sedum. So Light lived, and then they destroyed Sedum, and Light ran away. Right. So he lived in Sedum about twenty-five years. 24 years. And then he went to the various different places. Okay. Vamshi is Dain, and the people of Zdain, Royim, Vechatoim, were wicked and exceedingly wicked. Vechatoim and sinners, Lashem to God, very, very, very bad. Okay? Now, what it means is like this they were wicked. The, what is the double expression? They were raw and wicked, so that means they were adulterous. Okay? Then they were sinful with their money. They didn't give any money to the poor. And or some people say the opposite. They were bad with their money. Rashi says, in fact, Rashi um, says, the goof with their body, Chatoim with their money, and then was Lahashem Ma'id. What do you mean they were bad to God also? The first two were between man to man. They're bad, bad with their bodies and the money in them. Then it says, La Hashem they were extremely rebellious against God. And this was another uniqueness of Zdaim that the Medri says is the same clip of Amalek. Amalek and Zdaim, Rashi quotes this, Yaydim Ribaynam, Umedchavin and Lim Ribayn. The Gemara Sanhedrin says, What was the uniqueness when it says the Pasik, La Hashem they were very, very rebellious against God. What does it mean? They understood the greatness of God and they rebelled against it. To explain this a little bit in Hasidic language, the seven nations of Canaan that the Jews conquered represent the seven emotional traits. The seven midot, like we have in Sefer Seimer, seven times seven. So, Canaan represents the evil emotional levels. Where do you have the intellectual emotional levels? Because Canaan was the seven emotional levels of rebellious against, meaning love of evil, fear of evil, pity of evil, everything evil, evil, evil. But where was the intellectual evil? That was Amalek and Zdaim. So then Rashi says, your day is Mean the uniqueness of Amalek, Amalek is worse than the nations of Canaan. There's no mitzvah to remember what Canaan did to you or erase their names. Amalek is, is a worse evil level. Why is Amalek worse? Because Amalek were intellectuals. Zdaim were intellectuals. They understood the greatness of God and yet they rebelled against him. And it's done. The same thing with Zdaim. In other words, a person that doesn't understand the greatness of God and rebels against them is not as bad as somebody who understands what God is and rebels against them. So what was the So one second. So one second. Let me explain a few things. So when the Jews conquered Ertisro, they were only able to conquer the seven emotional levels, the seven midas. The Torah says later on in Chumash, when God will broaden the boundaries, right? so meaning when Mashiach comes, the Pasuk is referring to, then there's going to be three more nations, Kani, Kenizi, and Kadmaini. That's what the Pasuk says, these three nations. So Chassidus explains, when Mashiach comes, the intellect of evil will be transformed to Kedusha. Not only the seven nations of Canaan, which represents the seven Midos, the seven emotional levels, actually the intellect of evil, which is a much stronger, powerful intellect, is stronger than Midas. There's a much stronger, powerful level of intellect, in, intelligence and intellect that rebelled against God, that's going to be transformed to Kedusha. That's going to be made of one. Do they have any connection to Amalek or no? Yeah, it's, it's the same. Zdaim Amalek, 
all these things have in common. Yeah? You dare to sleep by night? But they came out from Amalek or no? No, not necessarily. No. But there's a story. There was a famous chosseb in the name of Rebitsha the Masmid. It was a time of the Rebbe Rashab and the Fried the Rebbe. He was considered a Benin of Tanya. He was a very, very, very great man. So one time he said to the Rebbe Rashab that he speaks about the evil of Amalek. He says, who is that? A person that learns Chassidus. <laughs> when you learn Chassidus, what are you learning about? You're learning about God. That's what Chassidus is all about, godliness. And you're learning about God. So he wanted to say the statement that Rabbi Rashab understood. He stopped him in the middle. He wanted to say to the Rabbi Rashab, you know who the real Amalek today is? Us Chassidim that learn about God and understand Chassidus, understand godliness, and yet we rebel against God. <laughs> So we're the worst. But the Rebbe Rashab cut him mid and he understood what he wanted to say and he just cut him off. <laughs> but that was the uniqueness of Zdoim and therefore it says, not Roim v'chatoim, they were bad, with their body meaning committed adultery and uh, Sodom, you know, Sodom was uh, homosexuality. I mean, all these immoral things that they were doing and chatoim with their money and Lashem Ma'id, they actually rebelled against God tremendously. Can I ask you Yes, ma'am. Um, Did you sleep last night? We didn't no. Oh, wow. No. This is, uh, today, I mean, to, tomorrow is Chomosh. Is the same what you're telling uh, that Hashem said, if you don't do this, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that, and I'm going to do this. If you are not following my mitzvah, I'm going to do this to you. What? Is this the same time as right, right now, this, with, this, with this time of the Parsha? No, one, one second. I'm trying to figure it out. One second. Um, are the Jews still here or they're dead? The Jewish nation exists? Yes. With all those curses, we exist? Yes. Okay. Zdaim doesn't exist. Yeah. Okay. So, Hashem says in tomorrow's parasha, which is, Zdaim was so bad, their only punishment was extinction. To be, to be to what, completely what's, destroyed. Uh, what, what's there in Saddam is any better today? No, it's here all over the world. And it's not any better. Now, the Jews, the difference is, the punishment that we read in this week's Pasha, the Teichacha, right, the, the curses, is basically, Hashem says, okay, you're not behaving, so I'm going to use very uh, physical words for it. You're getting dirty, i got to clean you. What is the cleanliness? You know, years ago, before the washing machines came out, when you wash clothing, even today, when you wash clothing, if there was a heavy stain on it, you, you take that. a board, you know, you should remember this, and you scrub it, and you, you know, you're basically torturing the garment. Yeah? But the only way, if you're going to make nice the garment, you know, nice, you're not going to get the garment clean. Correct? A garment that became very dirty, you got to be rough, rough, roughness on it. Yeah? Hashem says to the Jewish people, you sinned, you got very dirty, I need to clean you. Not destroy you, I will clean you. The curses of fish, which are hidden brachas, that the, the, clen the cleansing of the Jewish people through the curses is that they became clean. And we're still here. That's why after the real curses in, in Devarim, in Kisavai, what's right after Kisavai? Atem nitzavim ayayim kulchem. Hashem says to Meishu Rabbeinu, who says it to the Eden, obviously, you know what? With all these curses, God, you're still here. The Jews are still here. And that's the difference. So then, <coughs> uh, let, let's go off for another two minutes. In Jewish law, there's no such thing as prison term. I mean, sometimes Bezim would lock somebody up. We learn to keep them off the street until they find out what to do or whatever. But there is no punishment in Torah law of jail time. You go 10 years, 18 years, life. Well, well, there is no such thing in Torah. In Torah, what punishment do you have? Either you get whipped, Malchus, right? Or you get death. 
Now, you can have Bezdin kills you, Hashem kills you, the various different types of things. There is no concept of prison time in Torah. And there's a Sikha, the Rebbe explains why not. Because the purpose of a person's life is to be constructive. But you nechel beganeiden, Hashem put mankind in ganeiden, laavda uleshamra to work and be constructive. Adam laamul yivaleid, a person was born. Eiv says, a person was born to work. Amal to make the word effort. Now, the purpose of a of, of a human of a person is to be constructive. Therefore, to put somebody in a prison doing nothing or basically nothing. Yeah, they have this job or that job. They're basically sitting around doing nothing. So number one, usually what happens, they become more hardcore criminal. So the Rebbe says in Torah, there's no such thing as, 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 as jail time. What does Torah believe in? Torah believes in uh, what's it? rehabilitation. Torah believes in rehabilitation. Get the people back Make them back normal that they can become immediate productive immediate to get to become productive human beings again. Then the Rebbe explained. Sometimes the crime of the person that they did doesn't allow them to be, in other words, their actions of evil were so bad, God doesn't allow them to be constructive anymore. So therefore, what's the punishment? Death, either by Hashem or by Bezdin. Malchus is a cleansing. Certain of us, you eat treif, right? You warn everything, you eat treif. So you need to be cleansed. So you need to get a good whipping. But not a whipping as a punishment. The whipping is a cleansing for the evil that the soul did. Okay? So by a Jew, a Jew has to be constructive. So therefore, all punishment in Torah is really chesed. It's kindness. Because it's a cleansing, a purification, that you you're out of it. You're not you're not dirty anymore. You're not impure anymore. You're back into normal society. Sometimes a person did such crimes that they, their actions don't allow them to be continuous uh, to, continue, to be continuing, be constructive. So therefore, the Hashem says the punishment is death. But Zdeim was so bad. That Hashem said there's only one way to get rid of him, is punish him. That they all die. It's so scary. What's scary? Getting into them. Life is scary. <laughs> yeah. Life is scary. Well, what are the options? What are the alternatives? There's a reward, there's punishment. No, what's the alternative of living? Dying is scary too. <laughs> okay. That's only during dying. Once you're dead, you're dead. <laughs> okay, Hashem Amar al Avram, Hashem said to Avram, after he parted late, my Ima, after light separated from him. And I'll explain this in a second. But Rashi says, as long as light was with Avram, Hashem didn't speak to Avram. That's what Rashi says. That's where the Pasik emphasis calls man Shadash Ima, Hoyadib Pedish Mimenu. Okay? And that's why when Hashem said Lech Lecha, is what she calls Lech Lecha, it means go yourself, don't take light with you. But Avram was a nice guy, so he took light with him. <coughs> so the Kliyaka asks over a very interesting question. We find Hashem spoke to him the whole time when light was there. Hashem spoke to him the whole time. Uh, uh, it's not about everything he's going to give him. Oh, oh, oh. So the Kliyaka says. Hashem Taka spoke to him before, but not what he's telling him now. Yeah. Now he's telling him, your, uh, your kids are getting the land. Yeah. <laughs> Why didn't he tell this to him before? Because was greedy. No, because Avram was punished. Oh. Avram took light with him because he said, listen, I have no children. He will buy my inheritance. Mm-hmm. Hashem said to him, that's not what I told you. <laughs> I told you, your kids are going to do it. Your kids are going to inherit you. Avram Avinu, I don't know, we would use the word doubt, chas v'shom, but Avram Avinu, this is what the Kaliyaka explains. Hashem didn't tell him that, but he says to him now, Sona pick up your eyes and see, 
min amokim asheato shom where you are. You should look to Faina, Negba, Kema, Vayama, north, west, um, in north, south, east, and west. Huh? By the way, it's interesting. The Mephoshim explain they've been on what? You know the directions north, south, east, and west? So in Hebrew it's called Safan. Why is north called Safan? So the Mephoshim explained Safan means hidden. Because the sun is hidden from the north pole. The closer you are to the mid to the equator, the warmer it gets, right? So in the north, the Mephoshim say Tzafa means hidden, and therefore it doesn't shine there like it shines further south. Negba, why is Negba called south? Because neg, Naga, Niguv means drying. Dry, right? Mean the drier climate of Eretz Yisrael, southern desert. So because southern Israel was dry, that's why south is called Negba, because Negev means dry. Kadem means before. East. Why is East called Kad- Kedma? In, huh? They came from Ghanaian. No, because the sun okay. comes up in the east. So where does call them? Where does first come from the day? Where does the day begin? From the east. Right? And the last in Yama, why is Yama called West? Because the Mediterranean is west of Israel, which is Yam. And therefore, because Yama, the Yam is west of Israel, West is called Yama. Right, What's that? Lahavdal, Lahavdal, Lahavdal. You know, uh, it's something in America called News. The News. So they say, why is News called News? News stands for North, East, West, South. The word News stands for North, East, West, South. Really? Well, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. It could. Well, you could. It does. It's all at least what it's up. You say so. That's what the word stands for. It's not, because you were saying that they begin. Yeah, the sun comes up in the east. Yeah. But in the Jewish calendar, the day begins at Sunday. Yeah, but not the light, the light of the day. Yo means light, day. You're right, the halachic night begins at night, but I'm saying day actually is when it's light. That's why it's called the rising, you know, early. But the moon rises in the east. Well, all the planets rise in the east and set in the west. Because... That's why we rotate. No, because that's what it says in Pasuketil. In our look is that we say every day in davening, Hello, Shemesh V'yareach. The sun and the moon praise God. Hello, Kokrech V'yareach. All the stars praise God, right? Mm-hmm. Now, how does the moon and sun praise God? By bowing down. So it says, the sun comes up in the east. Not only the sun, all the stars, everything. They come up in the east, yeah? And they set in the west. Now, the Gemara says, Shechina B'mayrev. The Shechina is in the western part of the world. So when the sun and the moon come up in the east, just look at the motions. It's a bowing motion. So they're all bowing to Hashem. And that's what Davina Melech said. So the simple meaning of the Pasik. Halu Hashem and Hashem, Halu Hashem and Jerech, Halu Kokech Vayer. How do they praise Hashem? They praise Hashem because they're actually bowing towards the Shechin on the West. But you don't think it has anything to do with the rotation of the Earth? It does, but why did Hashem make it that way? The sun doesn't have free choice to get up in the first. east. <laughs> the sun doesn't have free choice to get up in the east and set in the west. It doesn't have the free choice. But there's the way Hashem made it, because that's the way they daven to Hashem. Okay, so now Hashem said like this. Son the the Medrash says, He does Hashem said, just stand where you are. Yeah? And look. Look. All around. Hashem did a miracle, the Medrash says. Hashem miraculously caused him to view the entire land from where he was. And that's why the Medrash says, in this respect, Avraham Avinu was greater than Meshach Rabbeinu. Meshach Rabbeinu told God he wants to go into Eretz Yisrael. Over there, Hashem said to Meshach Rabbeinu, Alei Reisha Pizga, in the Zaysa Bracha. The end of Chumash. Halei Reisha Pizga, go up to the top of the hill. 
And Hashem then said, open up your eyes and see the land. Right? But Avram, Hashem said, stand where you are, you don't even have to go anywhere. Stand where you are and you see the whole land. What's interesting, in a few psukim, in Pasuk Yudzayin, Hashem says, Go walk around the land. Walk around the whole border of the land. So here he tells him, see. And over there he tells him, go. So, so which one is it? So Mephoshim explained very interestingly. There was the spiritual aspect of Eretz Yisrael and the physical aspect of Eretz Yisrael. Here Ava, Hashem is telling Avraham Avinu, look, why did Hashem show Meishu Rabbeinu Eretz Yisrael? Meishu Rabbeinu said to God, I want to go into Eretz Yisrael. So the Medrash says, Rashi quotes, V'lchi la'echo mi piril tzorech. Meishu Rabbeinu wanted to eat draft oranges. He wanted to eat Israeli figs. I mean, what did he have to go into Eretz Yisrael for? He said, there's a lot of mitzvahs you can only do in Eretz Yisrael. So Hashem said to him, you know what? I'll consider it as if you did it. So how did he consider he did it? By look, by Moshe Rabbeinu looking all over Eretz Yisrael, he spiritually, spiritually, seeing a spiritual, he spiritually acquired the spirituality of Eretz Yisrael. How does he acquire the physical land? You have to acquire it. There are nations there. You have to acquire it. So he actually walked around the, the perimeter of the whole land, Salich La'orko La'orko, and that's how he physically acquired it. That was the physical acquisition of Eretz Yisrael, <coughs> and the spiritual acquisition of Eretz Yisrael was Avram Avinu looking at the whole land. That's how the Mephoshim explained. But he was there anyway. Huh? But he was there anyway. Who? Yeah, but he was in one part of the land. He just came to the beginning of the land. And then Hashem says, look all over the place. So in order to acquire something, you have to cover it. Huh? Well, that's one of the ways of acquiring land. In a few parshas, when Avram Avinu bought Marta Samachpela, you know, for 400 uh, shekel kesef, over la seicher. What's, what's 400 between friends? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it says, it says in this forum that Avram brings the time, it says in the brother, I think it's the brother, the brother of the Naomi Prok says, that based on the calculations of redeeming fields in Vayikra, in this week's parsha. So, when Avram Avinu paid four hundred silver coins, you 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 redeem a certain field size for fifty shekel kesef. The Avram Avinu paid four hundred shekel kesef. It comes out how much land did he redeem? Six hundred thousand square cubits and six hundred thousand. Square Amis, based on the measurements of 50, how much land you redeem by that? So when he redeemed 400 shekel, which is eight times the 50, he actually acquired an Amma by an Amma with money for every single Jew in Eretz Yisrael. Every Jew owns land in Eretz Yisrael because of Amavinu bought a square Amma for 600,000 Shabbos. We're all Offshoots of that, so he bought actually bought land in Eretz Yisrael. Besides the fact that he walked around, besides the fact that God gave him the land, besides the fact that Bereishit Barley came and said, you know, he gave it to the. In addition to that, he actually paid it. What's the parameters of the borders of Israel according to Torah? Uh, five hundred amas by five hundred amas. I know, but no, like no, 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 no. Syria and those. No. They say part of I different of these things it are says part of it. Exactly. It's bigger than that. No, Takam is Harabayas. Four. 500 parts by 500 parts or something like that. 400 parts maybe. But like, I what does know. it include? I mean, it includes some of Biblical the Israel. countries. Biblical Israel. Whatever the boundaries are in the parts of Masi. But the, the Biblical Israel was acquired. But so every Jew. It's, but, one time, one time, one, but one more interesting point. Yushalayim belong to the Jews. Yet Davina Melech bought Yerushalayim from Aravna that there shouldn't be any questions. The Mokim Migdash. Even though it was the Jews anyway. It was given to the Jewish people. But he paid cash that nobody should be able to say not. Martha Machpelah 
even though it's part of Eretz Yisrael, belongs to the Jews. Avram Avinu paid cash for it. He didn't want any lay monkey business people saying, uh, so they paid cash for Marsa Machpela and, and uh, what's it called? Harabais, your slime. So when you go to and we still have problems. So how many square miles? It's a little bit smaller than a little bit smaller. What? I think it is it's part of what's the... What's that? What's that? What's that? Guy, what's that? What? Louder. I said... When you go to Israel and buy an apartment, yeah? Apartment, you think it's like your share, you're buying it now, or... or you're buying an apartment that when the share comes, you all go there, we're going to stay by you. That's why you're buying it. Um, okay, so he says like this. Ki call us, ki as, tells about Ki as call our artists as shatadaya, all the land that you see, and miraculously he saw the whole area to throw without glasses. Luchayat nana, I gave it to you, I will give it to you. Ulezarach unto your children. Ad Elam forever. What is Hashem adding here forever? That even when the Jews will go into Golos, they'll be exiled from the land. I did that many times. Eretz Yisrael still belongs to the Jews. The biblical Pasik. Not uh, Jordan and not, uh, uh, not any of those countries. Syria, Egypt, it belongs to forever. Okay, that's what the doc says. Even in Golos, it's there it's forever, <laughs> even though the Jews don't always occupy Eretz Yisrael, and there was historically a time that there were no Jews in Israel, right? <laughs> but they, um, okay. And I'm going to make your children, you're talking to me, you don't have any children, so I'm going to make your children numerous, like the dirt of the ground, of the earth, of the dust of the earth. Asher im yuchal ish. So that just one can count the dust of the earth, then your offspring will be counted. Meaning, in a negative way. Just like nobody, you know, can cost, count the dirt, they're not going to be able to count out how many children you're going to have. Okay? Now, <clears throat> why is this, why are the Jews likened to the, no, it's telling me, but sometimes they likened to Chechri HaShemayim, sometimes they likened to the stars of the heaven. Some days are like in Kuchol Ayam. Some days are like in Kuchol Ayam, Asher Yisaf Hermidov. Some days are like into the sand of the sea. Some days are like into the dust of the ground. What's the story? <laughs> are we stars? Are we dirt? Are we sand? What is the, the, the thing of the Jew? All of the above. Okay. So he says like this. Concerning the dirt, the Medrash says like this. Just like dust is from one end of the earth to the next, there's going to be Jews from one end of the world to the next. Just like dust of the earth can only be blessed with water, if one of the things to grow, you need water, the Jews who are likened to earth will only grow with Torah, which is likened to water. Dust is the dirt wears out even metal utensils, yet it lasts forever. The Eden will exist while the nations of the world will cease to be. Just like the dust of the earth is trodden upon, so your children will be down, downtrodden in the heel of foreign powers, when the Jews are in Golos. Just as the dust outlives those who tread on it, Hashem said, Tavram, your sons are going to outlive all the nations that persecute you. So basically, this is all the greatness of, of earth. Sometimes, the Jews are likened to Kirch Shemayim. So the Medrash says, when the Jews are on a lofty level, they're likened to the stars. When the Jews are on the lower level, they're likened to the dirt. And then there's another time. <clears throat> Kernels of sand are nothing. Right? But when they're on a beach, you have trillions, whatever it is, and they're all standing in unity, they can hold back the most powerful waves of the ocean. Think about it. Each sand, kernel of sand, is nothing. It's worthless. But when they stand together united, so then the most powerful powers of the world cannot go through them. So therefore he says like this. When the Jews are on a lofty level, they're like stars in the sky. They give, dark, they give light. When they're on a low level, they're earth. But even earth on a low level is the only thing that produces. What produces something from nothing? You put in a seed, it rots, out comes a tree. 
So what? That's only the earth. Not the, you can't plant on the stars. And the Chorlayam, it says, what does that mean? When the Jews are united, then they hold back all the mighty powers of the enemy. And when they're individuals, they, they get washed, uh, washed away. But that's the greatness of the Jewish people. But he says, you, your children won't be able to uh, be counted. to be so many things. Now, the Mephoshim will ask a question over here. Not over here, in different places. The fact is, the Jews weren't like the dirt to the ground, numbers-wise. The Jews were always, right? The passage says, you guys are the least of all nations. What do you mean, Kafara Oritz? And Kachichli Hashemayim? So it does, it said, the Mephoshim explained, it doesn't mean in quantity, it means in quality. In quality, the Jews are likened to the stars and the dirt. But they're not in physical numbers, they're not likened to that. Because the fact is, they weren't. Throughout history, count all the nations, where is the, the Pasuk itself says, at the least, the, the fewest of all nations. But. No. Okay, you know what? We just finished last Pasuk. Vayal Avram, Avram ten made his tent. Vayov Yeshu Belenim Amar Sheba Chav. Now finally moved to Chav. Finally settled down. The even Shem is Berach Hashem. He built him is Berach Hashem for the thanking Hashem. The Barvenel says for the promise he just got. Number one that he's going to have kids, and they're going to inherit the work, the land, and all, all the other uh, blessings. So he, he thank God for what he did. So I should